Hi, this is Anson Garcia with Verizon Tier 2 UCC Engineering. And I'm going to try to give a brief review um, of the differences when using a complete link solution, whether that be with Enterprise Voice or without, and a link solution with Verizon UCAS using Cisco's Cookie Link. Okay, so let's get started. I'd like to discuss what the customer scenarios uh, that we're um, getting asked questions about. Mostly, it's a customer with an environment that has Link in, in the enterprise already. The customer wants to stay with Link client on the desktop. So they like it. The users like it. They're used to it. They've come from a mock environment, possibly or they've just leveraged the licensing uh, that Microsoft has give, given them. And um, they want to utilize the Verizon UCAS for voice and video and online web collaboration with WebEx. Okay, so when I hear a customer uh, talk about this scenario where they have Link, my first question that pops in my head is, if they're using Link Enterprise Voice. I'm hoping and praying that they say no. Because uh, if they're not using Enterprise Voice in their Link environment, that means there is no voice uh, features inside the Link environment. And we can use Verizon Newcast with Cookie Link um, to provide the voice features and video features uh, as well. Because once we put in a Verizon UCAS with Cookie Link, we're basically um, taking over the voice video features inside Link. So hopefully that's the case. If that's not the case, I'll show you a couple things that you're going to lose. All right. Um, definitely when it comes to customers and their users, uh, you don't want to take things away. Uh, it's good to add voice video. Uh, to an IMMP environment, but if there's an IMMP environment with voice already, like Link with Enterprise Voice, it's hard to get the customer to swallow and the users to swallow that we're going to change the voice video portion of the IMMP voice video that you already had. So hopefully that makes some sense. So positioning. Customer can utilize Link Client right because we're going to use cookie link to um, uh, provide the Cisco UCAS or the Verizon UCAS uh, Cisco UC voice video features uh, they can utilize the robust voice video features of UCAS or Verizon UCAS right uh, any honest uh, engineer that uh, knows quite a bit amount of link um, and the voice features in Link, and quite a bit amount of Cisco UC and the voice features in UCM. Um, if they're honest, they'll tell you the truth. The truth is uh, voice video inside a Cisco UC environment is far superior than uh, what's in the Link environment. Link uh, and Microsoft have only, have only been doing this for a short amount of time, and um, uh, you just can't expect them um, to be able to do all the things that Cisco can do. Uh, again, if you ask someone, an engineer, to be honest, that knows both. If they're using, if they're looking at marketing slicks uh, from either of the two, and they're evangelists already for the Microsoft environment or for the Cisco environment, they're going to be biased. Uh, uh, full disclosure, I come from a Cisco background, uh, so you can. Uh, take my advice as biased um, or not. Now, um, to flip that around, uh, definitely in the IMMP world, for IMM presence, um, hands down, uh, the link environment wins and has uh, many more features in the IMMP, uh, IMMP environment than, let's say, Cisco Jabber. Okay, so some people like to say, Hey, you have a link IMMP. We have UCAS Cisco UC. Verizon does. 
we're going to marry the two together and going to have the best of both worlds. You would think that that would be the uh, way things would turn out. But um, when you glue two things together uh, that are going to be tightly integrated, you have to come um, to some common denominator of features. So you're going to lose uh, features and functionality in the integration. So uh, be careful on what you say uh, uh, to customers or if you're a trusted advisor, um, you can't, if, if you know what this is all about, you can't say, I'm gluing the best in the voice video world with the best in the IMMP world. I'm putting those together and that's going to give the best of both worlds. That's not the case and you'll soon find out uh, why that is. Uh, but it is, um, you know, uh, we'll meet a, a lot of customer needs, their technical and business needs. Okay, and then the customer can utilize the robust collaboration features of WebEx. Verizon UCAS um, has a WebEx add-on, uh, whether it be um, in the packaging or as an ad hoc add-on. Uh, WebEx, of course, more robust again than um, live meeting, which is going away, but the... Uh, uh, meeting and web conferencing that's built into Link. WebEx, of course, it's purpose-built, cloud-based, been doing it a long time, many more features. Um, okay, so let's get on with the um, um, uh, rest of the presentation here. Cisco UC integration for Microsoft Link. Okay, I would highly advise anybody that's going to talk to uh, your customer about Cookie Link or Cisco UC integration for Microsoft Link, please read the um, release notes first. There's a lot of information in there. I even found some stuff out today that I didn't know um, um, that surprised me. And hopefully I get a chance to point it out. But if you look through here, you know, tested video devices, tested audio devices, tested Bluetooth, USB, um, what versions uh, work with each other and all these things. So. Again, all you have to do is do a, a uh, Google for Cisco UC integration for Microsoft Link release notes, and you'll get them. Highly advise you to read Okay, that. let's get into the Link 2010 only um, demonstration. So the two clients I'm going to be um, using are Windows 7 clients, it's, and the users are going to be uh, Caden Garcia and Trinity Garcia. The client software, Windows 7, Link 2010 client, and Outlook 2010 client. Um, the demos uh, are just going to be a few. Hover over and contact a call, or uh, hover over, contact, and call, and dial, I should say. Outlook conversation history. Uh, this is where Outlook saves the conversation history, whether it be uh, uh, your instant messaging or your call history, your actual audio calls, video calls. And then starting a collaboration session, uh, or what we call web conferencing in link and starting that session from a contact list and then starting that uh, web uh, a conference from a chat window and then scheduling a meeting um, and I'll put via Outlook here. Okay so let's get started. Let's bring our two clients up First thing I said, we're going to hover over and call. Okay, um, just before I do this first part, I just want to make sure that um, uh, this is not a comprehensive demo. This is just pointing out some subtle differences, or some big differences, I should say, uh, when using Link uh, with Enterprise Voice and using Link with Verizon UCAS for your voice video. Okay, so I'm going to click here, and you can see if I hover over, I get this call button right here, right away. So I can uh, immediately call that contact. You can see over here it's ringing, and Caden can, excuse me, Trinity can accept the call, and then they're in a point-to-point -point call. Okay, let's hang that up. Um, Outlook conversation history includes voice calls by default okay so we just made a call let's go into Outlook and if you look down here when the link client is installed it also installs this conversation history folder so all the conversation history whether it be uh, chatting or calls are saved here 
And there's the call. We can see that this call was from Caden uh, to Trinity. And uh, it was done Tuesday, uh, January 1st, or January 15, 2003, 6.55. See, we just, we just did it. All right? Um, and I just wanted to highlight that that's on by default as opposed to having to turn something on, which we'll have to do in the cookie link environment. Okay, start a collaboration session from the contact list. All right, well, let me go right here. Uh, let's see how I can do this. I want to right mouse click. That's what I am um, uh, mostly want to do if I don't see something uh, staring at me in the face to do something or to start a collaboration session in this, in, in this window. I want to right mouse click. And I can easily see uh, that I can call, I can start a video call, I can share. Okay, well that's what I want to do. I want to collaborate. I want to share my desktop. Uh, maybe I'm going to share a a um, application that I have running or something. Okay, and I can see over here. If we look at Trinity's desktop, uh, Caden Garcia wants to uh, start sharing. And I can click join here. And then my regular uh, link. Um, stage comes up over here and then I can see that particular desktop. All right, I wanted to go a little bit further here and say from here I can call if I wanted to. I can do a link call and go ahead and get a point-to-point -point, uh, call up as well. I can come over here and I can accept the call and then I can bring other people into this as well and make this a um, audio uh, bridge and uh, collaboration session. Okay, so it's important to note that we're using the link web conferencing uh, role or features of link. So again, we're still pure link here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hang that up. Stop sharing. We'll close that. Go over here and close this stage. And um, we don't want to do that. Okay, next up is start a collaboration session uh, from a contact list. Oh, I just did that. Uh, start a collaboration session from a chat. All right, easy enough. Just want to show you that a little bit different. Let me start a chat. All I did is double click. Of course, I can hover over and right mouse click and start a instant messaging also. Okay. Hello. We'll go over here to Trinity's desktop. She's getting a, an instant message. Hi, and then uh, all right, and then we see that that's getting there, and then all we have to do is right up here, this share. Now I got my call, video call, and share, so I can share right from here. I can share my desktop. Okay, remember, all I'm using is on-prem stuff at this. At this, uh, I can accept the request. And then I can see my stage coming up, and uh, Caden is sharing his desktop here. And there it is. Okay, at this point, we're back at where we were. I can do video call. Yeah, I can add video to this if I want to. I'll stop sharing. We can add video. That takes a little bit on these virtual machines, so um, you know, I won't. I won't let you. Oh, video is not accepted. I'm not sure what happened there. That should work. Anyway, not something I was going to show you, so uh, I won't mess with it for now. Uh, close this. Okay, schedule a meeting via Outlook. All right, how do we do that? Let's close this. Go back over here. Open Outlook. What do we do? Uh, we do new items, right? Meeting. To Trinity. Subject. <coughs> Location. Online meeting. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and set this for now, 7 o'clock. And all I got to do is punch that button right there. There's my URL. It's populated automatically there. And I send it off. Okay. Close that. There's my reminder. I can click that reminder. I can start the collaboration meeting. It knows I'm the host. I'll click 
close that. Let's dismiss that. Now over here on Trinity's desktop, her reminder comes up. I'll go ahead and just, so we don't have any new things in here, I'll go ahead and accept that. Okay. I'll open that up. There we are. All she has to do is click right there. She's brought right in. And now what we're in is an audio conference call. So in this audio conference call, again, I can add video. I can also um, share my desktop just like I did before. I won't take you through that again. But that's how easy it is in the link environment to go ahead and schedule a meeting and join a meeting. Let me clean this up. Okay, we're back. Um, all right, so very simple things. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to point out here is are these two uh, clients have enterprise voice. So when a link client has enterprise voice, you'll see this phone over here. Okay, see this phone over here. All right, I just wanted to point that out. Okay, let's put those two away. Okay, let's go on to the next. Now we're going to do UCAS and WebEx Meeting Center with Cookie Link. All right, so similar environment, link infrastructure, and we're adding UCAS, Cisco UC, WebEx collaboration, and we're adding the Cookie Link and WebEx productivity tools. All right, so that's kind of the magic that makes everything work, those two pieces. So the clients we're going to be dealing with is Bill Turner and Davy Jones. Um, we have Link 2010 with the Enterprise Voice video disabled. So let's take a look at that. I want to explain that. Let's bring up these two clients. Here are the two clients here. And you can see that there's only three icons here, so there's no phone. That means, when you see no phone, that means inside the Link environment, Enterprise Voice has been turned off. The voice features in, in Link have been turned off. Okay? So we have Cookie Link 862. Okay, what's Cookie Link look like? That's this guy down here. So you can see I have my voicemail. I have call history. I have my phone. I'm in phone control right now. That's why it looks like a desk phone. I'm actually controlling a phone on the desk over here. I have my settings. And I have my dial pad. Okay, looks a little bit different. Remember, the link solution has the phone right up here. Okay. Outlook 2010, I don't need to show you that. The web productivity tools, the WebEx productivity tools. Okay, this is an important part because this makes a lot of things work. Where do you get that? Well, that's from... When you order the Verizon WebEx conferencing, remember you log in. Now, I like to log in here. The WebEx conferencing. And then right from in here, you can, um, uh, if you go in here and the WebEx productivity tools aren't installed, I can show you that they're installed here. There they are right there that one click uh, it'll ask you to install them okay I actually think somewhere in here you can install them there it is right here download plugins I think it's in here okay well I lost it but it's it's in. there it is right here. productivity tool setup okay and this is where you can install productivity tools this gives you the plugins for Outlook and Microsoft Office um, and things like that. So I'm going to show you that here in a second. You'll, uh, when I see anything that's WebEx productivity tools related, I'm going to point it out. Okay, I looked at 1010. Okay, let's do the demo. Hover over and call. The same demo we did in the pure link environment. Let's do it here. I'm going to hover over and call. Well, I don't have that menu. Remember we had that menu back in the link environment where I hovered over and I could call. So we don't have that now. So uh, my uh, immediate response uh, is to right mouse click. If I right mouse click, I see that I have three icons here. So 
important to note, these three icons are cookie link. Cookie link injects these three icons into the link environment. So this menu has some cookie link stuff. Place a call, place a video call, and start a meeting. I'm going to talk about this start a meeting in a second. Let's set it aside for now. So place a call. I can place a call here. I can see that my call is going through. And if I look at my other, I'm looking at Davy Jones here, I can answer that call. Okay, and there I go. And now just to show you, just I'm going to just pull down this just so you can, you can pause the video at, at this point if you want to look at what features are there. All right, I'm going to hang that up. How else can I make a call? Uh, a couple other that are less, um, uh, what I think less obvious, but I can click here and drag down to the phone right here, and I can place a call. Okay, that's another way I can place a call. Come over here and answer the call. All right, and you saw there that uh, when I placed a call on the receiving end, uh, you can go ahead and send it to voicemail if you need to. Okay, let's hang that up. Okay, let's go back. Um, no, not yet. Uh, let's Outlook Conversation History. Okay, the Outlook Conversation History. Remember, we saw that in the Pure Link environment. Let's see if it's here. Here's my Conversation History. And does my, my Cisco calls, do they, are they logged? Yes, they are. Looky there. Here's my call, 707, just right now, just a second ago, and I see that call is logged. So I still get that integration for my calls that are happening happening really in the Cisco environment. I get them injected in my conversation history that the link client actually produced when it was installed or created when it was installed. So that's kind of neat. The only thing there is you have to turn that on. It's not on by default. So in my cookie link configuration, which is this guy right here, my options, in general, I have to, conversation history, I have to check that, okay? Okay, just wanted to show you that. Okay, let's start a collaboration session. Remember, our collaboration sessions now are using Verizon UCAS, and Verizon sold me WebEx Meeting Center or uh, Event Center or whatever if they, we sold it to them off the shelf. And I want to start a session from the contact list. Okay, if I right mouse click here, right mouse click, excuse me, I see this start WebEx meeting. Remember I told you I'd point out WebEx productivity tools. This is part of WebEx productivity tools. So the application that, that I, I told you about a second ago that was installed from the WebEx web page, which is, uh, is it that one or is productivity tools down here? There it is. This guy right here is what enabled this right mouse click and put that there. Okay, so what happens if I do that? How, how integrated is this? Can I just click that and start a WebEx collaboration with J.D. Jones? <coughs> sure enough. Here comes my WebEx. I say OK there. Now, at this point, if I had my teleconference information in my WebEx uh, web portal, it could call me back. If you've seen my demos before, I, I um, really highlight the fact that our WebEx collaboration system uh, <clears throat> can call you back, dial you back, and all that jazz. So, um, something happened here, and this happened uh, uh, earlier, so I apologize. I'm going to point out... Um, a bug. This should have sent a link, and it's happened to me before. I'm not sure what's what's wrong or if there's a bug or not, but uh, there should have been a link here, and it usually works. One time before it didn't work, and it didn't this time either. Let me see if I send this invite again. Yeah, there it goes. So that should have happened automatically there. <coughs> it should have sent Davy Jones this particular link automatically. I look over here. Looks like Bill Turner wants me to join a WebEx meeting. Okay. I click on there, it looks like you sent me a link in my instant messaging client. All I do is click there. So you can see the kind of tight integration there between link and our WebEx collaboration system. And again, I can have it dial me back if I had told it to do so. 
and I, I don't, I have this one only saying to dial in. Okay, that's WebEx configuration that we can do or the customer can do. Okay, and in here, uh, as you well know, you guys are familiar with WebEx and, and all that stuff and how I can, you know, add video to here if I want to. We can start sharing video. Um, there's Bill looking at, uh, or, or Davy Jones looking at him and vice versa. And um, we can share desktop and do all that jazz. Now, again, this is a purpose-built application collaboration system so it's much more more robust than the link web conferencing of course you would expect that because it's a uh, uh, more mature product and and cloud based purpose based all that other cool jazz okay <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna end this meeting Okay, we get this cool Verizon business conferencing, blah, blah, blah. Come join us for a free trial, all that jazz, marketing stuff. Okay, I'll close that out. Okay, next, start a collaboration from the contact list. Okay, start a collaboration session from a chat. Well, you kind of saw me do that. Here I did it, remember the first time I did, did it this way, and it, it didn't work. It didn't send that for some reason. I'm going I'm to try it again just real quick. Let's see if it works this time. See, automatically, that URL should pop up in here. And it didn't do it again. Okay. That's all right. I'm going to show you this again, but you know, you know pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm a, I'll start from scratch. Open up a chat session. Hello. We'll go to Davy Jones. He says, okay, I'm going to reply. Hi. Over here, Bill Turner says, <clears throat> I want to uh, do Frieza. All right. And Davy Jones, sure. All right, so what do we do over here? Uh, I have that button right there. I start meeting. Okay, and there's the meeting. And there's the URL. I won't go through that again over here. And I'll go ahead and end that. You know what I mean. You know what happens after that. Okay, I think we are done. Chat, schedule a meeting. So last thing, let's schedule a meeting in Outlook. Here's Outlook. We're going to new items. We're gonna create a meeting. We're going to we want to meet with Davy Jones. Subject is uh, discuss. Numbers, location, WebEx. <coughs> I'm going to make that so it'll come up right now. Now, here's the uh, kind of tricky part WebEx Productivity Tools installed this button. Now, this button that Link installed is still here and will still work uh, because the collaboration um, is still, web conferencing is still on now. You can probably turn off web conferencing. I haven't looked it up yet inside link. So you can take this or gray this button out. But just a just to be aware of that, it may be confusing, but I'm going to uh, add WebEx right here. So this WebEx added, these two things, WebEx added. Um, this link added as a plugin. And this right here, cookie link added. There's my call if I want to call from here using my cookie link client. Okay, so I'm going to add WebEx. It gives me the opportunity to put a password because I have it configured that way. Oh, passcode. I'm not, I'm not going to use no teleconference. I don't have one configured. I would have purchased that from Verizon as well. And I'll go ahead and send that. And there it goes. Okay, I'll open it up here. 
I'm Bill Turner. I'll go to my link. I'm the host. All I got to do is log in there or click that link. It knows I'm the host. I've logged in before from this PC. So it knows my username and password. It gets me right in. Now over here in Davy Jones, all I need to do is I'll go ahead and accept that in my email here. We can accept that. <clears throat> I'll put that away. We'll bring that up here. I say it looks like Bill Turner wants me to join a meeting. I'll go ahead and do that here. Now, since I've been, I've logged into WebEx here as well. It knows my name, knows my password. This is, can be any name. I'm a, just a participant, so I'm coming in. It's really just automatically sending me to the URL, putting in the meeting number, right? That's all really it's doing. I click OK or join. At this point, uh, again, it would dial me back if I had an audio conference um, bridge configured. I, I don't. <coughs> and there again, we all know how WebEx works. So I'll go ahead and save you from that. We'll close all this. We'll dismiss that. Come back over here. Okay, and I think uh, that is it. Um, okay, if I didn't already, hopefully I already did. Let me show you one more thing. And if I missed it before, this start meeting right here. This start meeting um, is another... Um, uh, particular confusing uh, thing. This start meeting is if you're going to use Cisco Meeting Place. So Cookie Link is provision or has the hooks in it to use Meeting Place. We don't have Meeting Place. Verizon doesn't have doesn't sell as part of UCAS Meeting Place. Can we sell it on-prem solution? Sure. We can even sell it with WebEx or the WebEx node or whatever. But this is an on-prem, and you can see if I click that, it doesn't work. Now, I've read some things where you can take that uh, um, uh, through a group policy, uh, a registry um, uh, edit, or push down a group policy that edits the registry. You can take that menu item off. So I just wanted to show you that um, just in case you were wondering. All right. That's it. Thanks.